is brought to you by U.S. Air. Every time we fly, everything we do, U.S. Air begins with you. By Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the agent nearest you. Nationwide is on your side. And by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Welcome, everyone, to Alumni Hall here on the campus of St. John's University in Jamaica, New York. Tonight, a couple of undefeated Big East teams look to head to the new year that way. The Pittsburgh Panthers are set to take on the Redmen of St. John's. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Gorman along with Gary Walters. Welcome to a night of Big East basketball. Gary, let's talk first about Pittsburgh. Not much expected of these guys this year, and yet a very impressive win over Providence on Saturday. There sure wasn't, but they didn't realize that Paul Evans was going to pull three rabbits out of the hat. He recruited three fine players in Jaime Peterson, Satiris Agelu and uh, Willie Cauley. Uh, Satiris Agelu has a big time shooting stroke. He's only a freshman. He's going to be a terrific player. Uh, Peterson and Cauley can both rebound, and Cauley has a nice touch from the outside. They already have a terrific player in the backcourt. Maybe the best point guard, arguably, in the Big East in Jerry McCullough. Yeah, he might also be one of the best point guards, frankly, in the country. He's got terrific point vision. He has the ability to penetrate, but what makes him so tough is he can also make the three-point shot from outside. The Redmen of St. John's opened with a win in Big East Conference play. Saturday night, they beat Seton Hall at Madison Square Garden. Great Scott is what they're saying around the campus here right now. They're talking about both Chanel and James, the junior college transfer. Well, James Scott was a two time All-American in junior college, first time since uh, Larry Johnson did that at UNLV fame. James is a very talented player, has ability to go left and right. He's six foot six, rangy, uh, can play the guard or forward. Janelle Scott, a force inside. Uh, he's an absolute force. He had five block shots, five, a career high against Seton Hall. Was outstanding, and he also has the finesse at the other end to score. He's been averaging over 20 points a game for the Redmen. It'll be interesting to see if Chanel can do his thing against Eric Mobley, who's every bit as big tonight. We'll find out. Pittsburgh and St. John's coming your way next, and we'll be back after these words from our local station. One Friday night after work, uh, one of our course drivers ran into these Bud sales guys. And after getting his chops busted for a little while over this claim that Bud drinkers prefer an extra gold, he said, guys, here's the time and the place. You tell me. The first salesman picked extra gold. The second one, I can't stop. The third one, right for the extra gold. And of course, their supervisor wanted nothing to do with this anyway. You don't have to be a blood driver to know what's better. Course Extra Gold. Get back to real beer. We thought really that that was the proof of the pudding. The success of any organization of human beings really depends upon how well they can work together. So we try to hire good attitudes. Uh, I think the easiest way to lose success is to become convinced that you are successful. I think American Express has a distinctive market. I've really been uh, very appreciative of not just the card itself, but the service behind the card. American Express is welcomed on airlines all around the world. Herb is kind of partial to his corner of the world. AT&T has prepared a statement we would now like to present. Introducing AT&T Maximum Advantage. AT&T guarantees in writing that your business will get our lowest price or we'll automatically credit you the difference. We'll review your account quarterly and make recommendations for additional ways to save and help your business grow. <laughs> the plan that's right for your business. Look in the mail for this valuable statement from AT&T. Thank you. End of statement. This neighborhood is tough on kids. I know it was for me. Played ball on the same fields. Even hung out at the courts on Lincoln. Used to be pretty hot, too. Yeah, I was that good. <laughs> hey, welcome to Foot Locker, man. What's up, man? All my employees know to treat every customer right. I hope you, sir. Um, yeah, can you talk about these cross trainers, please? Hey, customer's the boss. Everyone likes it when they get respect. I can't help it. I see myself about 10 years ago in a lot of those faces. You just have to like people, and you just want to help people. Extreme Closer! They moved out of the basement. And what you call Stan's parents. And into the spotlight. You're serious about putting on a rock concert. Are you kidding? I'd give my right eye. But even though times have changed, they haven't. Uh, we're not worthy! Wayne's World 2. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to hurl. Ready PG-13. Starts Friday, December 10th. Welcome back, everyone, to Alumni Hall here on the campus of St. John's. We've got a little bit of a delay. As you can see, they had to repair one of the baskets. They stopped the clock with about 2 minutes and 25 seconds to go in the warm-ups, and that's where it still is.
apparently the basket is back together. They'll give St. John's a chance to get a few more shots as it was their basket that was down. And so we're going to have a little delay before the beginning of tonight's Big East game. A lot of kids in this Pittsburgh team, this is kind of a homecoming. It worries the Pittsburgh coaching staff a little bit. And you can see why Orlando Antigua from the Bronx, along with Jerry McCullough and Eric Mobley, Willie Colley from up Niagara Falls way, and Andre Aldridge uh, from Queens. You've been there as a coach. Is it hard sometimes, Gary, when you, you bring kids back into their hometown? Well, sometimes it is, Mike. I think there's a tendency in a part of the, a lot of the players to want to play very well, and as a result, they might get too psyched up to play and leave their game in the locker room. I think that's going to be one of the concerns that Paul Evans has tonight. Uh, but it's always a thrill to come back into your hometown and to play before a full house. I always I had a coach tell me one time he, the kids worried more about tickets than they did about the game. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a look at a team comparison between these two clubs. And again, both come in 1-0 and on the season in Big East play. St. John's, of course, had that loss to Towson State to open the season. A shocker for the people here on the St. John's campus. But then they came back to win two in a row. And Pitt off to that surprising 3-0 and start. The first two wins weren't a surprise, but that third one sure was in the way that they beat Providence College. And I, I think that's the key as we look at Chanel Scott going through some final warm-ups there, though. The key for Pittsburgh was the way they beat Providence. Everybody said that Providence would be one of the most physical teams in the league this year. And frankly, everyone I have talked to who watched that Pitt-Providence game said, especially in the second half, Gary, Pitt beat them up. Yeah, they really got an awful lot of help uh, from the bench. Uh, Jaime Peterson uh, and Willie Cauley did a terrific job of uh, spelling Orlando uh, Ortega uh, and uh, Eric Mobley in the front court. Uh, I don't think that Eric uh, had the, the uh, type of game that he would normally have, and they really spelled it very, very nicely. So Pittsburgh and St. John's both with the chance to go 2-0 and on the young Big East season, and again, a chance to really go all through the holidays and start the new year right on top of the standings. And from a psychological point of view, that can be a real confidence boost, especially to a young team like Pittsburgh with so many newcomers. We are just about ready to go, so it's time for tonight's Nationwide Insurance starting lineups. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agents nearest you. He just might be Dennis McClintock from Elizabeth, Pennsylvania. Let's go to our public address announcer, and he is the venerable Bob Shepard. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the Pitt Panthers at forward number 40, Chris Gant. At forward number 44, Orlando Antigua. At center, number 52, Eric Mobley. At guard, number five, Jerry McCullough. At guard, number 13, Ahmed Sharif. And coach, Paul Evans. For St. John's. At guard, number 23, Derek Brown. At guard number 32, James Scott. At center number 42, Shawnell Scott. At forward number 44, Fred Lyson. And at forward number 34, Charles Minlan. and coach Brian Mahoney. So Brian Mahoney with a change in his starting lineup. We'll see how it works out and we'll be back after these words from our local station. How many colors can the eye see? How many sounds can the ear hear? There's no limit. That's why Sony created the videotape. To capture every subtle shade. The videotape. For richer color, truer sound. If it's worth recording, isn't it worth a Sony? What's your AT&T calling card number? My dog's name. My shoe size. 
Introducing the new calling card with the easiest to remember number, the AT&T Personal Choice Calling Card. Call now for the only one that lets you choose your own number and PIN. You may also qualify to save 15% on your card calls. So ask for details by calling 1-800-223-2000. My calling card number is my daughter's name. <laughs> Call now. Mike Gorman, Gary Walters back out here at Alumni Hall. The Redmen having won six of the last eight against Pittsburgh. And a change in that starting lineup. Hello there. Fred Lyson in the starting lineup for St. John's. Maurice Brown had started at the point. Now Derek Brown will be the point guard. Let's see if Pitt decides to react at all to that change. Mobley and Scott will jump it up and run away. McCullough easily controls the tap. Immediately inside, Mobley over a double team too hard off the glass and Lyson's there for the rebound. Out outstanding, to right, Brown. outstanding rebound by Lyson. Nice pass. And Mobley. With the hand in there, draw on the early foul. Well, if there were any concerns about Derek Brown handling the ball at point guard, they were probably dispelled by that pass. That was a beautiful dish on the fast break and an equally nice uh, pitch out by Lyson. That'll put Chanel Scott at the free throw line. Chanel very, very active in the early going this year. Oh, here, here comes Derek Scott coming up the floor on the break, throws a nice bounce pass to Chanel, filling the lane. Chanel is very active uh, for a big man. He really fills the, break, fills the break very nicely. Scott one and two, Mobley pulls it down, so the Redmen are on the board first. We are just underway at Alumni Hall. Derek Brown's out defensively on McCullough. There's Minland with the quick hands, but it came to Sharif in the corner. Scott's got him. License on Antigua. Sharif will take the pull-up and hits on the board. And you had Sharif coming off a nice pick on the baseline with a nice dish there from McCullough. McCullough out with a little pressure three-quarter court. Derek Brown played some point guard the other night against Seton Hall. McCullough's quick hands giving Brown trouble down on the baseline. Then Mobley swallows him up and Mobley rejects the shot by Scott. Wow, Mike, this will be some contest tonight uh, between Mobley and Scott. Uh, there's a little behind the back pass in there. And got a lot. He sure did. Lyson comes up shooting and hits a oh, three. Boy. That's going to be a confidence builder for Lyson. He's a good three point shooter as well as being an excellent passer. St. John's by two, and immediately Pitt goes back into Mobley, kicks out to Antigua, and he answers with a three of his own. I love that pass from Mobley. It was a nice dish into Mobley, tossed it over to the weak side, away from help. Very nice pass. Here's James Scott touching the first time on the offensive end, goes inside to Chanel. Nice pass by Chanel Scott. Offensive foul, James Scott, as Gant got good position down on the baseline. Yeah, that was nice defensive help underneath. Uh, Chanel Scott uh, threw a very nice backhanded bounce pass, a uh, similar type pass that he made against Seton Hall on Saturday night for a bucket. Hit the ball in the early lead, just two minutes gone here at Alumni Hall. McCullough gets the screen from Gant, penetrates, finds Mobley, and then Scott knocks it away. McCullough gets it back and throws it in. Acrobatic shot. You wouldn't expect that from your point guard on an offensive rebound. Now Scott lost the handle, and did Sharif touch it? No, says the official. It's pitch ball. Well, so far, Mike, both teams are going to their strength, which is their man-to-man -man defense. Uh, St. John's clearly has a great tradition of man-to-man, -man, and uh, they've been staying with that most of the season. Ryan Mahoney experimenting here in the early going, like a lot of coaches concerned about playing games this big this early. Nowhere to go, and he turns it over. Lyson gets it to Derek Brown. Nice spin around McCullough. Good look. And Antigua makes sure with the hard foul on James Scott. Well, there was really nice defensive help down there in order to prevent the shot. And once again, we had a nice pitch out, and Derek Brown once again dishing at the other end. All right, here's the defensive help on the original pick and roll play. Lyson steps in, gets rid of the ball to the guard. 
with a nice spin dribble there by Derek Brown. James Scott will get more and more comfortable, I think, Gary, as time goes on. It's a major jump, no matter how good you are. When you come from a junior college to a conference like the Big East, it's going to take a while to get adjusted. Yeah, I agree, Mike. Uh, you know, one thing that uh, James Scott has is talent, and I think it's going to rise to this level. St. John stays aggressive in their man-to-man. Teague -man. trying to throw a little screen and follow it the other way. Sharif knocks one down outside, counted as two. Well, that's really a very nice execution by Pitt. They run a lot of uh, double double picks, or what I would call uh, staggered picks on the baseline for their shooting guards, in this case, Sharif. Inland's pass is too high for Scott. Scott was trying to hold Mobley off and get to the pass at the same time. All right. Well, St. John's is really a power team. They try to throw it in and force it into uh, Chanel Scott. That time, uh, they just didn't connect. pace in this game a factor or both teams content to play about the same way again? I think both teams are pretty content to play the way they are right now. Nice tip by Mobley. Yeah, Mobley on the boards. Mobley's come out impressively tonight, Mike. He has a nice offensive rebound and one very nice uh, cross-court pass for an assist. Six-point Pittsburgh lead and they have quieted the crowd. Chanel Scott, a fake and then good help but a follow is there, James Scott. Nice follow by James and a very nice swing of the ball by St. John's. McCullough, a little stop and go, kicks it out. Antigua gets the roll. He's two for two, uh, shooting threes. We're getting that soft roll tonight. McCullough showing you why he's one of the best players in the country. Penetrates and dishes back to the three-point line. Inside, outside. Points going up on the board in a hurry for Pitt here, who scored 94 on Saturday. Derek Brown is short. Mobley, the outlet to Sharif. St. John's back defensively. Sharif is alone against three players and is fortunate to throw it off the leg of Lyson out of bounds. I'm not sure where Ahmed was headed there. I'm not sure either. Maybe for an early exit, Mike. <laughs> Six of nine shooting for the Panthers to open it up. The key there, the nine shots attempted. A little double team on McCullough. Gets lucky with the pass. Antigua to Mobley. Just kind of powers it up and either an offensive foul, let's call it a travel on Mobley. And we're going to get a timeout. Pittsburgh out of the blocks quickly, 14-7. We'll be back after these messages. You know how fast your business is changing. But do you know which airline is changing faster than any other? Improving schedules. Modernizing its fleet. Forming a global alliance. Making so many improvements, it can truly be said, in the history of aviation, no other airline has made so many changes so fast. And all of us really it. After years on the road, some small cars find themselves in a tight spot. But of all the small cars built in the past 12 years, more escorts are still on the road than any other. And when you realize that Escort is thousands of dollars less than the leading imports and offers four models for the same low price, it's easy to see how the competition stacks up. Ford Escort. I remember last year, honey, when we were moving. Right. Well, she called us and said if we put both our new house and car policies with her, we would save money. Well, we have so many choices at Nationwide. And my job is to make you aware of your options. She was always there with an answer. That's the way we're trained, to be very knowledgeable and to be there when people really need you the most. And that's important. Agents like Margaret are nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. Pitt with the early seven-point lead here, 15.54 to go first half. A good chance to remind you, this copyrighted telecast is produced by authority of the Big East Conference and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Conference is indeed prohibited. Well, Mike, we have to be impressed uh, by the way McCall is running his team so far. Uh, they're shooting six for nine from the field, and much of that has to do with a very nice ball distribution. Pitt comes out of that timeout with some full court pressure. One, two, one, one press Scott there, able right? to get it ahead. Brown. Oh, nice Chanel. catch. That was a really, it was a nice pass, but it was an even better catch. 
Chanel Scott really filling the lane. Unusual for a 6'11 center to get up and down the court with such passion. Here's the double, double team. All right, they're changing up their defense a little bit. McCullough, the dish inside. Chanel oh, Scott uh, sends whoa. it back, and he's got something to say to Orlando Antigua, who walks away with a smile. A monster mash. Here comes the penetration by McCullough, the dish off to Antigua, and a clean block. Sharif down the baseline, little pull up is long, rebounds loose, James Scott has it Ooh. tipped, Lyson gets it back, we've got a foul. I think that was a good foul, Mike, I think St. John's had an outnumbering situation. Probably had a chance for a layup at the other end. Jerry McCullough picking up his first. Georgetown and Miami, Providence and Villanova, both Pitt's going neck into, and neck early. Pitt's going into their 2-3 uh, zone. Try, trying to match up a little bit out of it. There's a steal by Sharif, McCullough on the break. And nice move by McCullough at Derrick Brown. Kind of a revolving door there. Very nice move. Waited for Derrick to make his move before he made his and countered. Seven nice point pit lead. Taking it down to the baseline, hits the jumper. That's what I like about Scott. He has the ability to go both left and right off the dribble. That's a real art if you can shoot your jump shot off your dribble. Not too many guys can do that today. He's got five in the early going. Antigua's two for two, shoot threes. Hits a floater this time. Nice baseline move. Fake to the right, took the baseline. Orlando with eight, one above his season's average. And another near steal by McCullough. Derek Brown, good look. It's a very nice dish. With time, Derek Brown looks like he can make the pass. It's just a question of whether he can make it in pressure. There's a turnover by Mobley. Derek Brown spinning into the forecourt. And James Scott's going to go to the line. And Tigo will pick up his second foul. The most impressive part about that was the unselfishness of Derek Brown, Mike. And many guards might go to try to force that. Nice to just dish it off, lay it back, and allow James Scott to finish off. Rashawn McLeod and Carl Beckett check into the game. Beckett had an exceptional game on Saturday night off the bench for St. John's. He really was a spark. He played terrific defense uh, and hit the boards for Pitt. Lyson and Midland over there on the St. John's bench now. James Scott off to the, his best start of the year. He's got six points. And Willie Colley, who played so well against Providence the other night, checks in for the first time this evening. St. John's in a 1-2-1-1 press, which, which is what they normally do after a made foul shot. They're going to try to trap in the corners. Pitt will try to keep the ball out of the corners. Put the ball into the center against the, against the press. Nice lead diagonal. pass, there's Colley. Good look, and Mobley couldn't handle it. Tipped away out of bounds. It comes back to St. John's. Well, Chanel was able to intimidate him into passing, and they were able to get some weak side rotation. Caused the turnover. Redmond right back in this now. A chance to get to one or tie with the three. We've got 13 minutes and about 30 seconds to play here first half. Pitt once again in this 2-3 matchup zone. Trying to force St. John's to beat him from the perimeter. Derek Brown, tough shot, makes oh. it. <laughs> he might have hurt himself. I think he slipped on the floor. Mikey made a very tough shot. It seemed like he was in the air forever. A teardrop through the through the net. Yeah, here he comes in here. Just nice soft teardrop right through for two. Six nothing run here for St. John's. They are back to within one at 18-17. Brown stays out on McCullough. Now Beckett jumps out, fakes a double. Gant blocked by Scott. Rebound underneath. Loose scramble for it. There's Gant again. Nice job. Oh, staying boy. with it. I'll tell you, Gant is a man in there. He is a terrific rebounder. He's, uh, I, I was told by Norm, Norm Law, the assistant coach, that he's one of the hardest workers, if not the hardest worker on the team. And it shows in his play. 
All five of the pitch starters have scored now. Scott taking baseline again, Mike. Nearly lost it. Cowie got a hand in there. They double Rashawn McLeod. He gives it up. Scott misses the three. McLeod on the offensive board, rejected by Mobley, saved by McCullough. Gets it to half court to Cauley. Cauley in the open floor. Good look, Sharif for two. Three and two, they had to get that. Key to that play was the pitch out from McCullough in the corner. It was the pass that led to the pass that led to the score. Beckett, who doesn't look to shoot it a lot, goes inside. McLeod has it blocked. Chanel Scott in the offensive board. He just took that ball away from the pit players inside. Pure strength and power on that play. Chanel's got seven, eight minutes gone in the game. Got to tell you, there's a battle going on in the pivot between Scott and Mobley. Mobley gets a roll. Mobley. Eric doesn't usually shoot him from that far out. I understand. What, 75% of his shots have been dunks, Mike, right? Yeah. And he had nice touch on that one. Range. Eric calls that range. <laughs> just saw that. that was my range. <laughs> Derek Brown again. Rebound. Boy, Polly takes up space under there, doesn't he? He sure does. It's really a big team. They have a lot of depth in the front in the uh, front court. We've got a timeout. 11:35 to go here. First half. We'll be back after these words from our local station. Best fried clams in the city and 36 taps. No one sells more draft beer than I do. When they came in with the Coors Extra Gold, I said, what do I need that for? I got enough beer. Couldn't believe it. Now the bartenders can't pour it fast enough. It, it seems to just take off. It's amazing. Who'd, who'd have thought? You know what? I think Coors Extra Gold is the best premium beer in the country, without a doubt. You don't have to run a bar to know a good beer. Coors Extra Gold. Get back to real beer. I think it's about the best thing we ever did. What's exciting about the business, even though we've been in it now 30 years, we're still learning every day. We've made every mistake twice at least. <laughs> we're always experimenting with new shapes and new forms, but I think that's part of the learning curve. I think that's part of the lesson of life and certainly the lesson of retail. And I think that just the very fact that people can use their American Express card ends up creating a, an additional sale for the store. American Express is welcome to Crate and Barrel and plenty of places they pack them in. <laughs> You'll never make it in the NBA. You'll just sit on the bench. You never even played college ball. You're just not ready, man. There's no one ever chance to develop. Don't get your hopes up. You're just, 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 just not ready. ready. Just just not ready. ready. Just just Twenty-four nineteen, pit by five with eleven thirty-five to go first half. And I know Gary from your days of coaching again to come into somebody else's building and get the crowd out of the game early, always important. And Pitt's done that. Yeah, they've done a really good job. I'm really impressed with how cohesively they're running their offense for this early in the season. Uh, I think it's probably a little bit easier to prepare uh, your man-to-man -man offense because you know that St. John's is going to play man most of the time. But nevertheless, I think it's real testimony probably to the abilities of Jerry McCullough. Maurice Brown is into the game for the first time. He's trying to stay with McCullough. Sharif got free on the baseline, missed the jumper. Rebound, here's Mo Brown on the break. In the middle, the dish left side, and a good strip. Oh, nice play nice by play. McCullough. McCullough's been all over the place. Uh, you know, he's got long rebounds, he's uh, stopped breaks, uh, he's you know orchestrated the offense. He's done it all here so far. People think when the point guard gets caught back there defending, he's at a disadvantage. I don't think so, because he knows where the pass is going to go. That's right. He can fake a little bit. He's a little bit quicker than the bigger guys coming down the floor. McCullough outside misses the jumper. Gant couldn't control the rebound. Here's Maurice Brown on the break. And his pass is behind Rashawn McLeod. Well, that's one of the things that uh, Brian Mahoney has been concerned about. He's going to step in and fill the, the shoes vacated by David Kane. I think the job is Maurice Brown's uh, to win or lose. Uh, and hopefully he can step up uh, here in this game and, and show that uh, he can revert to the form of his high school days where he's an uh, all-New York City player. Once again, Pitt's running a pick and roll at the top of the key, which is what they do to free McCullough to pass and to shoot. Now they're, they're doubling off the uh, pick and roll. Cauley with a floater too hard off the glass. Rebound is tipped out of bounds. I think Chanel Scott was the last to touch it. Yes, he was. 
I think that's smart strategy by St. John's to double McCullough. I don't think they should just let him dribble out there off that pick uh, and do anything he wants, Mike. They ought to force him one way or the other. Just about halfway through this first half. Entry pass to Gant that he wanted gives it up to Peterson who's in the game for the first time. Crowd wanted a walk. Still plenty of time, 17 on the shot clock. Sharif nowhere to go and the travel is called. The crowd wanted about three travels on that possession. They finally got one. Frankly, that was St. John's uh, best defensive stop of the, uh, of the evening. They did an outstanding job of playing help defense, both uh, on the ball and off the ball. A look at Kyle Becker, who again had a great game off the bench, one of the co-captains of this team, along with Chanel Scott. Derek Brown back to a more familiar shooting guard role. Rebound ripped off underneath him there by Gantz. Yeah, that shot might be a little bit quick, especially when you're down by five. I'm sure Brian would want them to work a little longer. Willie Colley trying to kiss it off the glass and does. I'm not sure it was a kiss, but it went in off the glass. He's showing you why he was an All-American uh, all in J.C. Peterson and Collin, the two junior college transfers on the front line now for Pitt. Inside, outside. Skip pass, Derek Brown will take it again. Short with that one, an air ball, but Maurice Brown is there. Derek Brown, good look inside. Beckett can't get it down. Collie got a hand on it. McCullough out of the pack with it, and a foul on Charles Midland. That was a good foul, Mike. They had a three-on-one if uh, he didn't foul him. James Scott's coming back in for St. John's. Let's check the lineups now. It is Chanel Scott, Maurice Brown, James Scott, Charles Minland, and Carl Beckett. And Satiris Agelu is going to make his first appearance of the night for Pitt. He's out there with McCullough, Colley, Gant, and Peterson. Interesting to watch Agelu. He's only a freshman, but he's got a big-time stroke. I apologize, I missed that call. Uh, but it obviously cost Pitt a possession. Inside, Midland, basket won't count. Charles looking for that pro continuation move there. Get credit for that. Hoop. He's not going to get it here. <laughs> Chris Gant picks up his second personal foul. Midland, nice hook shot. I think Paulie made a mistake that time on defense. There's a nice pass by Brown into uh, Midland, who was wide open. He wasn't a body close to him. Scott out covering Peterson. I get the feeling the St. John's uh, intensity on defense is picking up a little bit here. McCullough, nice little fake. Can't get it in off the glass. Chanel Scott, the rebound. Quickly to James Scott. Tries to thread the needle, and look who's there again. McCullough. McCullough through a crowd, oh. loses it. Midland, the loose ball. Numbers for St. John's. Beckett, Scott! Yes. Nice dish off, nice layoff over the shoulder. Outstanding play. Scott really picks up a lot of garbage by hustling down the court the offensive end. St. John's back to within three. McCullough spinning into the lane and a foul either on Beckett or Maurice Brown. I guess it's Maurice Brown picking it up. We're going to get a timeout. Eight minutes straight up. Left to go here in the first half. Pittsburgh by a three. making changes faster than anybody. And for you. You enjoy your flight with US Air. One thing will never change. Our dedication to you. Ford announces the news truck buyers have been waiting for. 
the best lease ever on Ford F-Series pickups. Now you can lease America's number one pickup, Ford F-Series, for $229 per month for 24 months, but only for a limited time. These trucks are loaded with features including driver's side airbag, V8 engine, automatic transmission, air conditioning, and the XLT package. Get the best of terms on the best-selling trucks in America. Drive home this loaded F-Series XLT for $229 per month. See your Ford dealer now. Bill Walsh for Sharp. In sports, you better know where your X's and O's are. It's no different in business. You need a game plan. And Sharp's got winning game plans for your business. A booklet that'll help you find the right copier, like Sharp's high volume duplicating system. It's going to increase your productivity and reduce your operating expenses. And how Sharp, the number one fax company, can show you a plain paper laser fax with the lowest cost per copy in the industry. So call 1-800-B-SHARP for your winning game plan. Believe me, nothing beats winning. Well, here you Pittsburgh are. holds here on to the lead here at 26-23. Well, here we're going to see why Jerry McCullough is the seventh all-time... Uh During the holidays, one of the great things about living out here is looking for the perfect tree. Sometimes when we find one, we just leave it. Season's greetings from our families to yours. That's a long three, misses it. Big rebound, James Scott, and a good look for Maurice Brown, oh. and then he couldn't handle the pass. Did save it, though. And McCullough nearly tight roped the sideline, but he lost it out of bounds. I think Maurice is very tight. It's too bad. It was a nice, nice rebound by James Scott. He really skied up there. Through a terrific outlet pass to Maurice, but he couldn't handle it. When they play James Scott at guard, Mike, it gives uh, St. John's really creates problems for the opposition because he can really rebound from the guard position. He's a very versatile player, James Scott. That's Tom Bain, number 22, who's come in to give Chanel Scott a little rest. Bain has not seen much action at all this year. No room down there in the baseline. Gantz, that's a traffic rebound he just pulled down there. But he did make it all the way into the basket, uh, driving to his left. That really shouldn't happen against the 2 3 zone. Rowan Barrett's also into the game now for St. John's. Mobley wants to go on Bain. He gets Bain in the air and draws the foul. St. John's bench trying to get an offensive foul <laughs> called, not tonight. Oh, that's a nice head and shoulders fake. Ball fake by Mobley. Got Bain off the ground, off the ground and drew the foul. Derek Brown's come back in for Maurice Brown and Brian Mahoney over there. You and I were talking earlier about how Brian Mahoney has picked up a lot in his years with Louie, and he just was right down in front of Maurice Brown, giving him a little tap on the cheek and trying to pump him up. Learned that from the master. Gant in traffic for two. Gant is really strong and powerful. We're seeing some powerful front courts here tonight. Pittsburgh back up to a five-point lead. They've had it up as high as seven a few times, and then St. John's makes these little mini runs to get to two, and, and Pittsburgh able to get breathing room again. Minlin forces it on the baseline. Tough shot. Rebound Mobley. Tough shot on that baseline. And a chance for Pitt to get back to seven. 6.25 left to go first half. McCullough finds a way. The tip, no. Rowan Barrett, the rebound outlet to Derek Brown. Derek is stripped by McCullough. What a play by McCullough. And then Gant able to save it, but gets it into Derek Brown. I think we're at a track meet here, Mike. <laughs> Up to James Scott, and there's a steal by Agalu to McCullough. Finally spots Gant, who didn't make that last trip. I got a crick in my neck trying to catch up to the action. And Pitt has it back to a seven-point lead at 30 to 23. Well, St. John's wasted a couple fast break opportunities there. It's too bad. James Scott into traffic, nowhere to go, and he lost it off a sneaker out of bounds. Chanel Scott and Fred Lyson are coming back in for St. John's, and Orlando Antigua back in now for Pitt. As Georgetown has gone up four on Miami, 22-18. One of the things we're seeing here is uh, Brian Mahoney trying to experiment in his backcourt, shifting some of the players around, trying to decide who's going to be his leader. 
as he heads into the rest of the season. Derek Brown and James Scott now the backcourt for St. John's. Galu with Scott all over him. Antigua had the hot hand early, forces it inside. Colley has it slapped away, coming our way, and Fred Lyson's able to oh, save it to Fred. Derek Brown. Gets it back. Tipped in by oh, Chanel Scott. Outstanding play, outstanding save by Lyson. Derek Brown made a very nice dish. And once again, Scott following up. There's a double on McCullough. Holly throws it away. James Scott gets it to Lyson in the middle. Chanel Scott and another steal for Jerry McCullough. And he throws it away to James Scott. James Scott, the pull up. The action's getting fast and furious here. Both teams are really intent on running. Nine points for James Scott. James and Chanel have combined for 18 of St. John's 27. And we're going to get a timeout. 4.32 left to go here first half. Pittsburgh by three. the all-new Ford Mustang. It is what it was. And more. Mike's the first guy that ever explained life insurance in a way that we could understand it. Making things clear is the part of my job I like best. He showed us all the options that Nationwide has and even helped us choose. It's training, uh, seminars and updates, it just never stops in Nationwide. With life insurance, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And we know Mike. Agents like Mike are Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. During the holidays, one of the great things about living out here is looking for the perfect tree. Sometimes when we find one, we just leave it. Season's greetings from our families to yours. I three in a helter-skelter game, Derek. Well, here we see some real defensive hustle. First Midland strips the ball. Little tap out by Chanel Scott. Great save by Lyson. This is a real team effort behind the back dribble by Derek Brown. Blindside dish to Lyson underneath the basket and Chanel Scott with another follow. Mike, I think that's three or four layups that Chanel Scott has by simply hustling up the court and getting in the break. He's got 11. Picked up a lot of garbage. Antigua has it rejected, but a foul is called. Somebody left Antigua unguarded on that baseline pick. McCullough spotted, took advantage of it. It was called on Chanel Scott, his yeah, first. There's Antigua going back door, actually. And he's fouled on the shot. Orlando with a solid first half offensively for Paul Evans. He's got to be pleased, Mike, coming back into New York and playing this well before his hometown. That's the first free throw attempt of the game for Pitt, and it comes with 4.24 to go in the half. One of two. 31-27, four-point game. Pitt has led all the way. St. John's keeps making these mini runs, and Pitt, thanks mainly to the defensive hands of Jerry McCullough, has been able to disrupt them. St. John's wants a good shot this time, taking their time. Rowan Barrett, the dish down low. Midland blocked by Mobley, picked off by Agalu. Really nice pass by Barrett inside. Lyson really keeping good he, touch with Agalu. He really, he really is. They, they clearly did a good job of scouting because Agalu was very hot against Providence in the previous game. Mobley is short with the turnaround. Midland the rebound. Barrett inside, got swallowed up. Lyson misses the three. Chanel Scott kicks it back out. Derek Brown will reset with about 3.20 to play here first half. 
31-27 Pittsburgh. St. John's being very deliberate on offense now. Well, McCullough nearly got that pass. He did. He's all over the place. Derek Brown. Nobody home. Well, that's what happens when you leave your feet. You're not really sure what you want to do, Mike. Lyson made a cut to the basket on the opposite side of the court. And Derek threw it through the ball to where he was. Providence and Villanova involved in a good one as we update you on the Ford scoreboard. It's a big game for Providence. They had high hopes for that Friar team. They did not want to start out 0-2. Agalu. That was a NBA three. He sure launched was. right there. <laughs> he's not bashful. No, he's not. Uh, Paul Evans wants him to shoot. He's got the green light. St. John's trying to work with a new point guard in Derek Brown. Scott, the handoff to Chanel Scott. Now they'll reset with 12 on the shot clock. Nice reversal of the ball. Midland nowhere to go. Mobley just held his position. And Midland was too far underneath the basket. And there's a steal by Midland. A little bit of a telegraph that time by McCullough. He wound up with one hand, and the defense was able to read it. We go under two minutes to play here first half. One of the few mistakes McCullough's made. Nice hands again. Yep, amazing hands. A Galu. That was nicely done. A little hesitation dribble. He followed through and laid it up softly off the glass. You don't, you don't like to make a call on a kid when you've seen him for the first time, but it didn't look like he ever had any intention of passing that. Uh, and there were two guys open on the left side, too, yes, Mike. they were. <laughs> Nice look inside by Derek Brown. Midland and gets that one in despite Mobley's presence. Well, there's a real battle inside going on between Mobley and Scott. You can see them. They're like sumo wrestlers in the pivot there. Traveling is called on Orlando Antigua, who says to Rick Hartzell and gives him a little wink. Nope, I don't think so. Stick around with us at halftime. We'll have a preview of all the schools in the Big East Conference, along with our Volkswagen halftime report and, of course, stats and highlights from this game. And we'll update you on those other two Big East games, Georgetown down at Miami and Providence playing the surprising Villanova Wildcats, who opened up with a win at Georgetown. Chanel Scott. That's his move. He likes to get the ball in the low post there and take that little turnaround jump shot. Antigua. Too high off the glass. Lyson the rebound. St. John's now a chance to tie as we're in the final minute of the first half. A little bit of an ill-advised shot there. St. John's going to work the clock a little bit here. I think you're going to see them try to go inside, outside. 15 on the shot clock. Tipped away by Mobley, but it comes right to James Scott. That was a terrific pass to Midland. And late whistle, but the foul is called. Eric Mobley, I believe, is going to pick it up. That'll be his second. Yeah, I didn't see the foul, Mike. I thought he was intimidated into a walk at first, but... Well, they gave that foul to Gantt, and yeah. it's his third. Well, that's a critical foul. Gantt's her second best rebounder. Going to get Jaime Peterson up off the bench right. immediately. One thing about Pitt, though, they do have the depth in the front court, so unlike many teams, uh, they go deep there. They can afford some foul trouble. Midland, a chance to tie the game. If Midland makes this shot, you might see St. John's go into a 1 2 1 1 press after the made foul shot. Midland had 16 against Seton Hall on Saturday night. Peterson there for the rebound. Shot clock is off, so Pitt should get to the locker room with a lead here. Up one on the ball. Yeah, they're going to work the clock all the way down here. They're going into a stack on either side of the court with McCullough free to wheel and deal. Galo's trying to lose Beckett without much luck. Yep. Trying to run a Galo off the picks inside. Galu gets it, comes up shooting. Doesn't get the bounce, but Pittsburgh gets to the locker room on the road with the lead. And Midland and Peterson saying goodbye to each other till second half rolls around. 
Our score, Pit 33 and St. John's 32. We'll be back after these words from our local station. The second half of tonight's Big East basketball game is brought to you by U.S. Air. Every time we fly, everything we do, U.S. Air begins with you. By John Hancock Financial Services, official life insurance sponsor of the 1994-1996 U.S. Olympic team. And by Right Guard Sports Stick. Anything less would be uncivilized. We are back live at Alumni Hall, 33-32. Pit by one here at the half. Mike Gorman along with Gary Walters. A little helter scouter there in the first half. The defenses did get better as we went along. Well, they really did, Mike. I think uh, it's one of the reasons we have so many turnovers in this game. I think that at this point, the defense uh, seems to be dominating the offense. Uh, Pitt has actually averaged about 20 turnovers a game going into this game. St. John's has averaged about uh, 17 turnovers, and uh, we're seeing that reflected in the play in the first half. 48 and 45 percent shooting for the two teams. Nobody really able to make any hay outside the three-point line. Not a whole lot to choose from in the turnover column or rebound. Slight advantage there to St. John's, but a big advantage to St. John's in the middle. Chanel Scott getting the best of Eric Mobley. Yeah, well, once again, Chanel Scott showing you why he's an All-American candidate. Uh, I'm just really impressed with the passion that Chanel Scott plays with. Here's a nice little turnaround by Rashawn McLeod, and Chanel just powers his way in there, gets the rebound, and puts it back up. 13-6-2, the numbers for Chanel Scott, 4 6 and three, the numbers for Eric Mobley. However, in the backcourt, it is Pitt who is dominating, and boy, Jerry McCullough just has quick hands, doesn't he? Yeah, very quick. Uh, the thing about McCullough is that he has great anticipation as well as the quick hands, he, and clearly he likes to play defense. Here's a, here he is displaying his quickness, just pilfers that ball cleanly and heads up the other end. That's a, uh, that's a road stat right there, three steals. I thought he had about five or six yeah. in that first half. Here are the individual numbers. Antigua hitting the three-pointers has nine to lead the way for Pitt. Sharif six, Gantt six, McCullough and Mobley four apiece. Chanel Scott, the leading scorer, and nine for, for James Scott. And, and this is only two games now that I have seen James Scott back-to-back. -back. But you get the feeling, Gary, watching him, and you said this to me before the game, this is one of these kids who every time you see him probably is going to be a little better than the last time. Yeah, you know, Mike, as a coach, uh, I get really excited when I see him play. I think he's got uh, unlimited talent. Uh, I think as he gets used to the uh, tenor of the game that's played in the Big East, you're going to see his talents emerge. Uh, he sure has the credentials real, well, coming in. They found, a, I think, a real future star in James Scott. Jerry McCullough, a star right now for Pitt. James Scott's going to be out there along with Derek Brown, Chanel Scott, Charles Midland, and Fred Lyson to start the second half for Pittsburgh. It'll be McCullough, Sharif, Willie Cauley is going to get the call to start the second half with Antigua and Mobley on the front line. St. John's ball to open the half there, down one. Pitt once again going into 2-3 zone. Might note, Mike, that uh, at the uh, last 10 minutes of the first half, the defenses for both teams really tightened. Boy, Scott really uh, loves to take the baseline. He's got that nice pull-up jump shot. Sharif with one of his own that won't go down. Rebound. And Midland was the last to touch it. Pitt will keep it. James Scott now with 11 in St. John's. Their first lead of the game at 34-33. Into McCullough, oh. off to Mobley. And what a nice touch pass by McCullough off the pick. That was a set play, Mike, and it was just a lovely dish. Yeah, here comes, here comes the uh, lob pass, Mobley. Call up in the air and dishes it off to Mobley. Second foul on Chanel Scott. Nowhere to go for Sharif on the baseline. James six. Scott's got a lot of height as a two guard. He's a legitimate 6'6. Six, six. He really does. Uh, he, he can rebound in there as well. Sharif has it slapped away, loose. Most of the loose balls have been picked up by Pitt. Collie likes that glass. Willie's going to get it taken oh, down one way or the other. McCullough's called with the body. Yeah, Derek's going to have to be careful with his dribble out here. McCullough's going to feed off that. Like a shot, right? Yeah, you got it. Like a piranha. Derek. 
Eric Brown in the unfamiliar role of point guard. Minlin down on the baseline. Antigua might have got a piece of that. Cauley got the rebound, and he finds McCullough. That was a very nice feed by Lyson into Minlin. Antigua squares up, comes up short, rebound to Midlin. Nice rebound, nice pitch out. Lyson knocked away by McCullough, picked off, and then Lyson steals it back, gets it to Chanel Scott, but he was all alone. He decided not to challenge Mobley. Yeah, St. John's has to be careful with that long pitch out because McCullough's feeding off that. Deal. Sharif got the hand in there. Good hands, nice pass. Ahmed. Oh, oh Eric Mobley. Guy. Very nice lob pass up there by Sharif. Mobley putting it down. I wasn't sure where Ahmed was going. I thought that was a shot at that first. <laughs> Ring rain, as they say. Lyson gets it down low, the dish shot. Mobley the block, but Mobley got a lot of forearm on that one, too. Well, that was a clinic on passing against his zone there, Mike. Moved the ball very nicely from left to right, swung the ball, the ball never touched the ground. Got an easy layup underneath and a foul. Second on Mobley. So the two centers with two apiece. Chanel Scott with 13 first half points, steps to the line. His club trails by three. But that was the best offensive execution I've, we've seen against the pit zone by St. John's. Oh. Second team all Big East last year, Chanel Scott was. That's a St. John's in a 1-2-1-1 one, one, one trap. Hit one nicely by Mobley oh, again. Very nice pass. Well, Mobley watching Chanel Scott get in the action at the other end. He figures he's going to cash in. That's one way to discourage the press, too. You got it. They broke, the, they broke the press down very quickly. Holly got a hand on that. It'll still be St. John's ball. 17 minutes left to go. In the game, 39-35 pit. Looking to go 2-0 on the young Big E season. I thought it was on the arm. I thought so too. Nice offensive board by Midland. Can't get it down though. Rebound to nice Collie. Pitch out. Mobley wild with the turnaround. Lyson is there. Yeah, it wasn't there even though McCullough made a very nice pass into the pivot. Can't, can't emphasize enough the job that McCullough does running this team. James Scott, nothing doing out of the baseline. Derek Brown lost the handle. Mobley trying the outlet. James Scott got back to steal it. And that's a reach around on Ahmed Sharif. That's just the first on Ahmed. Not a lot of fouls called in this game, at least in the first half. A couple of things are happening here tonight, Mike. One of which is that James Scott is definitely emerging as a real impact player, I believe. Lyson out and Maurice Brown in. Now if you fit, do you go back, man? Well, I don't know. They're, you know, Pitt still has the uh, still has the lead. I think they I think they'll stay in the zone as long as they have the lead. Three-point field goal for James Scott gets the Redmen back to within one. 39-38. Inside, Mobley gathers, too long with it, tipped by Colley. Midland comes down with it, and Midland gets fouled. There's some fierce battles going on inside for rebounding. Fouls on Eric Mobley, his third, will be back after these messages from USA. We have... You know how fast your business is changing. But do you know which airline is changing faster than any other? Building new terminals. Enriching its frequent flyer program. Forming a global alliance. Making so many improvements, it can truly be said 
In the history of aviation, no other airline has made so many changes so fast. And all of it's for you. Of all the fine German engineering in a new Volkswagen, there's one advance not found on any other car. A device small enough to fit in the palm of your hand, but big enough to change the next 10 years of your life. It's a warranty. The longest limited powertrain warranty in the world. One part of Volkswagen Protection Plus. It's sort of like having headlights that see all the way into the future. Volkswagen, the most loved and protected cars in the world. I love you, little Jenny Catherine. I want to tell you something very, very important. Daddy got a raise. That means I can buy you a sandbox, sliding board. What do you think? You think we should put some of it away? What do you know about the stock market? I love you, little Jenny Catherine. Guess what? Daddy got a raise. We are back, 39-38, pit by one. Eric Mobley has doubled his point total here in the first four minutes of this second half. And certainly an easy way to do it with the alley-oop pass and the dunk. This time Antigua. Yeah. Eric saying, I like this. Let's get in there again. Mobley's on the bench right now as he picked up his third foul right before that timeout. So it's Peterson, Colley, Antigua, Sharif, and McCullough for Pitt. Derek and Mo Brown in the backcourt for St. John. Midland, Chanel Scott, and James Scott in the frontcourt. Once again, Brian Mahoney still trying to get a feel for who he wants to put in to the point guard. Rejected by Peterson, but a foul called. That's the first on Jaime Peterson. Pitt starting off strong and uh, you know why that's going on, right, Gary? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the St. John's defense uh, has really picked up its pressure here in intensity, I think, uh, after the first 10 minutes of play. And that's one of the reasons why the field goal percentages have gone down. There's Mobley not happy with those three fouls. And it is very warm in this building tonight, as you could tell from the sweat that was pouring off Eric Mobley. Minman goes for the bubble at the line. It's taken down by Peterson. Pittsburgh holds on to the lead by one. Colley in traffic as it's stripped. Maurice Brown out of the pack with it. On the break, Derek Brown tipped away. Minland right spot. Oh. Yes, and a foul. That's great. Well, that's a nice break by St. John's, but Colley felt the pressure. He should have pitched it out. Look for the next man. Okay, here comes Maurice Brown, dishes to the left. Derek Brown throws it back, hits Scott. Inside to Minlin, finishes it off. Got to be lucky to be good, right? Absolutely. Go get it, Peterson comes down with the miss, St. John's by one. Second time St. John's has led in the game. 15 minutes straight up to play. Sharif is swallowed up by Derek Brown. Well, St. John's is really doing a good job of uh, help defense here. Every oh, shot is being contested, even that one. That was not an easy shot. I didn't know you could play the glass from that angle, but Willie can. Pauly, yeah, Willie really likes to use the glass. He's got nice touch off it. Been very impressive. Maurice Brown looking to force it inside. James Scott. And the ball will go back to pick. Here comes Rashawn McLeod into the game, and Charles Midland will sit down on Brian Mahoney's bench. Hit by one. Both these teams, Mike, have to protect the ball. They want to make sure they get a good shot every time down the court. Pick and roll at the top of the key again. Forcing McCullough way out to start the offense. Antigua, second time that move has been called a travel on Orlando. You have to give a lot of credit to Mo Brown. He did an outstanding defensive job in preventing McCullough from penetrating. Took Pitt out of the rhythm a little bit. So 
close games all over the Big East tonight. Derek Brown comes up shooting. Long rebound, Mo Brown in the right spot. St. John's with a fresh shot clock, and McCullough just picked up his third personal foul. Well, he was caught on that, but he took a shot at it. He's got to be careful. He doesn't want to pick up his fourth. Satiris Agalu is going to check in. Ahmed Sharif goes out, and Gant comes in. Gant will play with three fouls, and Orlando Antigua goes out. Sharif's not too happy going over to the pit bench. But then again, most good players aren't very happy That's when they right. go to the bench. They're, they're here to play, Mike. Carl Beckett checks in, and Derek Brown takes a seat over beside Brian Mahoney. Rebound tracked down by James Scott. James Scott's doing it all again here tonight. Sure is. I hate to keep reinforcing that thought, but he's been... He's very smooth. Very smooth, stable, impressive. Usually, the rap on junior college kids is that they're wild. Yeah. He's anything but wild. That feathery touch. 16 for James Scott. And the Red Men go back up by one. High post, low post. Nice action there by Pitt. Oh, pretty nice move by Peterson. Very too. nice. His first two of the night. Very nice. Nice passing. Beckett tries to answer, long with the jump shot. Gant high with the elbows. McCullough, little crossover move, keeps on going, and nice was fortunate to get a foul. I think it's going to be James Scott, his second. Yeah, nice penetrating move, right to left crossover. On James Scott. Paul Evans with his club out of the blocks quickly this year. Pitt was picked as low as seventh or eighth, I saw, in some Big East preseason polls. Well, he's gotten fine contributions from these newcomers. In particular, Pauly, Peterson, and Agalu. Agalu, though, has been quiet tonight, Mike. Yep. McCullough, usually a pretty reliable free throw shooter, misses that one. Panthers maintain a one-point lead. 12.57 to go in the game. Homecoming for Jerry McCullough. Played here in the city, lives here in the city. This is both free throw. Both teams have been cold from the line. James Scott to the forecourt. Pitt doing a, a better job at preventing Chanel Scott from getting the ball here in the second half. Yes, they are. Although at the first half, Scott really scored most of his buckets on the break. So they've done a pretty good job actually the whole game. James Scott front rims it. Collie up big for the rebound. Galu inside Peterson, nice outside play. McCullough. Oh. Knocks down a three. Three. What a big three. McCullough showing his range. Seven points for Jerry McCullough. Had 19 in his first Big East game against Providence. Rashawn McLeod, nice pass inside. Oh, it won't go for Scott. And they're going to call McLeod over the back with the foul. A nice execution by St. John's. Again, high post, low post, which both Pitt and St. John's have used here against each other's defenses. Derek Brown comes in and Mo Brown goes out. That was the best stint of the evening for Mo Brown on the floor. Yeah, Brian shuffling his guards. Agalu trying to free himself from Beckett. That's going to be a chore. Beckett's a very good defensive player. Number 30 for St. John. Here's the double on McCullough. Holly. And that's a kick, but it was a pretty good one by James uh, Scott. Yeah, really good defense by St. John's. Nice trapping. We're going to get a timeout. 11.42 left to go in the game. Pits up by four, and we'll be back after these words from our local station. Half a minute, millions of people will be focused on me. Hey, I want to look every bit the professional sportscaster. I can't have flakes. I had them. Not now. Not with this. You see, Head & Shoulders gets to 10 times more of the places flakes start than it did just a few years ago. Five seconds. That keeps my hair looking its best, and me in top form. All set. Especially when I'm facing some of the biggest names in sports. 
Head and Shoulders turn standard problems into great looking hair. Over the years, you've given the very best to your family and friends. This year, why not give the gift that shows you really care? Give the gift of health. Nordic Track. Nordic Track says more than any other gift. It says you care enough to make an investment in someone's health, in their future. Nordic Track is the world's best aerobic exerciser because it offers the best total body workout. One that helps you strengthen your heart, lose weight, reduce stress, and look and feel your very best. Over two million people have discovered that Nordic Track is the one that works. It's so effective that even after five years, seven out of ten Nordic Track owners still use their machine an average of three times a week. Give the gift that will last a lifetime, one that says you care. Nordic Track. Order now and we'll also include an electronics package worth up to $149. Make this the best Christmas ever with Nordic Track. Give the gift that they'll keep on using and enjoying for years to come. We'd like to take this moment to commend the Right Guard Academic Challenge Award winner this week, and it's Gerard Grampy from Miami, track and field and biology, his strengths. At the 1993 Big East Track and Field Championships, Gerard plays second in the 100-meter dash. And also to commend the Soft and Dry Academic Challenge Award winner, and that's Becky Spees of Villanova. Becky helped the Wildcats to their fifth consecutive national cross-country title with a fourth-place finish at the NCAA Championship this year. And on the inbounds pass, a foul is called, I think, either on Chanel or James Scott. It's on Chanel Scott, so that's his third. He and Mobley now both with three. Mobley still sitting over there on the pit bench. Well, they're even, Mike. Be interesting to see uh, how soon Mobley comes back into the game. Peterson's played well. Very well. Galu into Peterson inside. Quick turnaround. No tip. A nice tip. Yes. Two-handed tip. You don't see that often. Almost like volleyball up there. Willie Cauley showing his versatility on the boards. He's got eight. Pitts oh. opened up a six-point lead. I tell you, we have two stars being born here tonight, Mike. Former Willie Cauley and James Scott. And Cauley got a piece of that shot by Scott and then hit the side of the backboard. So it'll stay St. John's ball. I don't think there'll be a reset on the clock as the shot was blocked. Well, they're going to get one. And Rick Hartzell and John Cockerty now will talk it over at half court as Minlin comes back in and Chanel Scott is going to get a chance to get a rest. A little arbitration here, Mike. Yeah, and also a nice move by Brian Mahoney. You get. Get your center out while this is going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Grab uh, him an extra protect, 30 or 40 seconds. Protect him a little bit. Yeah. Save him for going down the stretch. John Clockety, one of the best officials in the country, so he'll get this straight quickly. Pitt shooting the ball very well here second half. Not getting as many shots, but putting them down. And the Redmen are struggling. It is still a two-possession game, though, at 48-42. Twenty six seems to be the number that we have decided upon. So here we go with eleven thirteen to go in the game. And there's McCullough. Oh, what a play. Again, what a, what a play. <laughs> <laughs> Gets the bounce pass inside. Oh, that's nice just outstanding. I mean, McCullough is putting on a defensive clinic here tonight, Mike. It's been all over the court, really inspiring this pit team. And St. John's is going to take a timeout. The largest lead of the night belongs to Pitt. It's 8.50 to 42 back after these words from our local station. You know, if life were perfect, women would let guys drink milk straight from the carton. Yeah, and guys would ask before taking food off your plate. Women wouldn't answer a question with a question. Why not? If things were perfect, you'd like watching sports on TV. Yeah, and you'd let me hold the remote control. Wow. At least there's amp still light. It's only 95 calories. But it still has a real imported flavor. I mean, it tastes great. Amstelite is better than great. It'd be perfect if you didn't always have the last word. No, it wouldn't. <laughs> Savan 100% cotton pants. The only pants in the world made with Process 2000. A special washed-in, no-wrinkle process that never washes out. So your pants never wrinkle no matter how many times you wash them, no matter how you wear them. 
Wash them, dry them, wear them. Savan, the original no wrinkle pants. Saturday, tango. Great. Bye. Dance. Dance. We are Bianca. And Benny. Master the passion of the tango. The cha-cha-cha. Bianca and I started on Broadway in 1950. Benny, we teach all levels. Uh, that was the original production of Coco Loco. And I am... No partner necessary. You'll be tangoing tomorrow. The 9X Yellow Pages. It's surprising what the ads can tell you. I taught all the stars. Benny. Eight-point Pittsburgh lead, the largest of the night, thanks to plays like this by Jerry McCullough. Yeah, outstanding play. Anticipation by McCullough. Taps the ball up in the air, runs it down. A little crossover dribble to his left and a feed for a little scoop shot by Gant. James Scott, Derek Brown, Fred Lyson, Rashawn McLeod, and Charles Midland on the floor right now for St. John. A Galu McCullough, Gant. Peterson and Collins. So the three newcomers are on the floor for Pitt. Coming out of this timeout, St. John's definitely wants a good shot. So I'm sure Brian told him to work the ball. Scott. And they got it. 18 for James Well, Scott. you can just see it in Scott's eyes. He's really feeling confident. He's in the rhythm. He's in the flow. You know, he's doing a good job defensively, too, Mike. There's a double on McCullough. He runs away from it. Yeah. Found Gant inside. Lucky break as it bounced to Peterson. And St. John's made a decision. They want to double McCullough off that pick. Oh, nice play by the freshman Rashawn McLeod as he was all over Gant. The possession arrow stays with Pitt. McLeod out of that fine program in Jersey City, St. Anthony's High School. Yeah, Bobby Hurley's developed so many fine players in New Jersey. Galu missing. Peterson battles for the rebound. Stripped out of his hands. Recovered by Lyson. Well, things are heating up. Lyson's going to try one. Front rims it. Rebound McCullough. Collie's running the floor. McCullough blows by Derek Brown, who fouled him on the way by. McCullough's so effective on the break, Mike. Derek Brown went up to challenge him, and he gave him a little hitch-and-go dribble and went right by him and got fouled in the process. Chanel Scott back in. Probably will stay in unless he fouls out. He comes back in with three. Rashawn McLeod goes back to the St. John's bench. Providence and Georgetown with leads in the second half of their games. Mobley remains on the pit bench. Paul Evans has gotten such great play out of his new kids. Nice inside, outside, Mike. Holly a little long with it. Gant, oh, that was a tough traffic rebound there sure by was. Gant. And the reach-in foul, I think, on James Scott. Or did he just tip it out of bounds? Right there. He, he just tipped, tipped it out of bounds, yeah. But Pitt showing some very unselfish play here. Well, Pitt still doesn't have anybody in double figures. We've got nine minutes to go, right. and they're winning. Peterson back out. McCullough, a three. Misses that. Nearly got there. Oh, and he forced another he turnover. Sure did. Just heads up play by the part of Jerry McCullough. I mean, he must, he's got to be close to double uh, figures and steals. Yep, here comes the rebound. Derek Brown gets it. Starts to dribble with his left hand. And we're right starting handed. to look for McCullough. Yeah. Dribbled it right off his foot. Agalu unable to come up shooting. Colley takes it into traffic. Partially blocked. Loose ball comes to Midland. Good defensive help by Chanel Scott. He really plugged up the center. Some jostling going on between Colley and Scott. It's tough to score in this game. Sure is. Defenses, defenses on both teams. Very good. Yeah, I thought... A little warning for Willie Colley and Chanel Scott. Really good decision by, ref by referee Clockerty there. He picked it up early. We talked to John before the game. He said, you think we might have a physical one here? And he laughed. St. John's having a tough time swinging the ball from side to side against his 2-3. Scott 
We've got a foul, an intentional foul called underneath, and Gant yeah, and this Chanel is, Scott. This is unnecessary. Well, here we got Derek Brown taking the baseline. Looked like he was out of bounds. Oh. A little, a little shove. A little, a little shove. Little, Just a little, little shove. A little unnecessary, maybe, huh? We are going to take a timeout. We'll be shooting something when we get back. <laughs> 50 to 44. Of all the fine German engineering in a new Volkswagen, there's one advance not found on any other car. A device small enough to fit in the palm of your hand, but big enough to change the next 10 years of your life. It's a warranty. The longest limited powertrain warranty in the world. One part of Volkswagen Protection Plus. It's sort of like having headlights that see all the way into the future. Volkswagen, the most loved and protective cars in the world. A noble warrior advised, the art of protection springs from within. One must stay vigilant against one's unfragrant perspiration, lest one provoke a hostile response. Thus, a Norse ritual is right guard sportstick. An aromatic array of the freshest scents and maximum protection against disarming wetness. Confirming the wisdom, the best defense <laughs> is not to offend. Right guard sportstick. Anything less would be uncivilized. The day we uh, switched Hummaker Schlemmer over to NCI. People are very cautious. Their business relies heavily upon 800 service. We never wanted to jeopardize our great relationship that we have with our customers. They had been an AT&T customer for over 100 years. We were able to get 48 circuits up and running in a matter of about half an hour. We were amazed because we did not notice anything at all. Everything worked out perfectly. It's so easy. It's so simple to make the switch. We've been overjoyed. Welcome back once again, everyone. We're getting it straight here. Derek Brown, despite Bob Shepard running down what's going down. Well, this could be a, a, certainly a costly foul, and, and, uh, and adding the technical to it, that doesn't help. A it doesn't foul help was, the pit cause. A foul was called on Gant, a personal well, foul. Derek Brown makes those two. That's four personal fouls on Gant. And a technical foul was called on Willie Cauley. And Derek Brown's going to get another free throw. This is that one. St. John's just two of eight at the line here in the second half. He's going to get another one. Well, of course, a big item here, Mike, is St. John's gets the ball as well. They've got three points out of this trip, and they're going to get the ball back, a chance for a five-point uh, trip. Very, very costly technical. And it's brought the crowd back into the game. And they hadn't been in the game. That's right. You can feel the emotion pick up. St. John's the ball, trailing by three, 825 left to play in the game. Galu's out on Derek Brown. Lyson inside, Chanel Scott doubled immediately. Lyson. And the foul. I think it's on James Scott. And that'll be his third. Nice move by Charles Midland there, who yeah. went over and helped up Chris Gant. Well, it was very nice offense that time by St. John's. They worked the ball nicely, got the shot they wanted, it just didn't go in. Pitt did a good job boxing out, getting the boards. Derek Brown awaits Jerry McCullough at half court. Under eight minutes to go in a three-point game. McCullough, nice little crossover move, tough shot. Can't bank it home, rebound. Derek Brown. Oh, he's fouled too. Gets it ahead to James Scott. Scott looked like he wanted to pull nice up. Trail. Chanel nice Scott, no! James oh. Scott, no! Rebound oh. Willie Cauley. <laughs> it's getting exciting. McCullough. Oh, nice pass. Peterson. Oh. And Midland takes down part of the basket. 
<laughs> well, we know it's physical, Mike, when they're destroying the basket in the process. That's the basket, as you can see, they yeah, were still padding on the before the game. Right. Up. Nice pass here. Once again, McCullough making the pass. He might have walked before the shot, too. Might have gotten away with one. And so we're going to get a timeout here as, again, we do some basket repairs. And we'll be back after these messages. He's the MVP. U.S. Air Reservations, how can I help you? Hi, how are you? How are you doing? Yes, sir. You're traveling light. Did you have fun flying? Yeah. On the airline that's making changes faster than anybody. Time for you. You enjoy your flight with US Air. One thing will never change. Our dedication to you. Of all the fine German engineering in a new Volkswagen, there's one advance not found on any other car. A device small enough to fit in the palm of your hand, but big enough to change the next 10 years of your life. It's a warranty. The longest limited powertrain warranty in the world. One part of Volkswagen Protection Plus. It's sort of like having headlights that see all the way into the future. Volkswagen, the most loved and protected cars in the world. Lure Jensen, they make lures for fishing. It's a family company that's been manufacturing lures for 60 years. It's like a family. We're like a family. My first call, the response was, uh, we're using AT&T and we're happy. One day, he, he called me and uh, said, now i got to talk to you about this because I'm going to save you some money. I learned that there were some business solutions we could provide. Uh, I didn't realize some of the things that could be done. Nobody ever explained it to me before. AT&T is so large with MCI, I feel like we're their number one customer. 50 to 47 is our score. We've got seven and a half to go. The basket is repaired. Thankfully, they have lots of that red tape here at St. John. I think the janitor is the MVP of this game, Mike. He got the largest uh, ovation we've had so far when he left the floor. <laughs> Ivy Peterson at the free throw line. Pitt with a three-point lead. Got to make your free throws down the stretch. Three points for Peterson, four points to lead. Looks like it could be a 1-3-1 trap here by Pitt. No, back into the 2-3. Thought they might try to trap here. Crowd wanted Lyson to take that three. Yep. Derek Brown, that was a terrific pass, but then Midland couldn't handle it. I don't know how it got through, it did. But a little high, maybe. It was a little high. I think a bounce pass would have gotten through easier, Mike. St. John's having a tough time swinging the ball from the left side to the right side, mainly because Derek is left-handed and has to throw the ball across his body when he's throwing to the right side of the court. Willie Pauly could dish inside. Peterson can't finish, but draws a foul. And if it's James Scott, it's his fourth. Pitt has been very effective with that high-load feed off their offense. All right. There's a nice little two-handed chest pass inside for the layup. So that's four on James Scott, who's the game's leading scorer with 18 points. Four points now for Jaime Peterson, all here in the second half. Five points, the Pittsburgh lead, 6.54 to go. Well, he's done a really good job of filling in for Mobley, as he did in the uh, Providence game. Pittsburgh still without a player in double figures. Yeah, and Pittsburgh also playing with three newcomers yep. as we go down the stretch. They've been out there for a while, too. <laughs> Derek Brown misses the long jumper. James Scott. Scott. There's that man Scott again. Yep. Gets it back. Nowhere to go. Giving it to Lyson. Now they'll reset. Plenty of time. 27 on the shot clock. Lyson goes through on the baseline. Midland to Scott Chanel. And yes, one. And oh, he powered it up there. What a tough pass in traffic from Midland. 
Nice pass to the baseline from Lyson to Minlin, Minlin to Scott. Good hands. Chanel Scott showing great versatility and strength. Peterson commits the foul. That is his second. Millen just goes about his business very quietly, Mike. He's a type of player that coaches really like because he doesn't need the ball to be effective. He's a very complimentary player to the St. John's team. The Wildcats have come back to take the lead on Providence, 59-56. There were like eight players in the lane early there got on the free throw. <laughs> well, they got it down to three. McCullough. There's a screen from Polly, the immediate double. Polly. Tough shot. Oh! I, I'm a believer. I am a believer, Mike. He's Ten. taking that shot from a it's about an 80-degree angle to the basket. Kiss the glass. First to double figures is Willie Colley. <laughs> All five of his baskets off the glass. That's no exaggeration. Scott. That was a long three. Yeah, Rebound to Peterson. Gets it to McCullough. Oh, oh what a play. Oh. Draws a foul. Nice I, hesitation and then a crossover dribble. Yeah, this is great. Here we go. Nice little dish out here. And here comes McCullough. Fakes sort of the pass. Crossover dribble. Right to left. Comes slices between the defenders and is fouled. McCullough is just very dangerous in the open court. Carl Beckett picked up that foul. That was just his first. Hit by five, 5.19 to play, and McCullough a chance to push that up to seven. Pitt has led for about 90% of this game, but much like the game St. John's played against Seton Hall the other night, St. John's keeps hanging around. Oh, they really do. They keep hanging around, hanging around. Well, they've been here before, Mike. They've been in pressure games. They're poised. They're going to have to display that poise again. Down six with 5 to 5.19 to play. McCullough's ice on the line. Yeah. That's the nickname. 57 to 50. Hit back in that 2-3 zone. St. John's has to swing the ball against this defense to be effective. Beckett, whoa! That's what I'm talking about. They have to go from left to right. Free that jump shot on the opposite side of the court. Two-point field goal for Beckett. The first points of the night off the bench for St. John's. And Chanel Scott just picked up his fourth personal foul with the body on Jerry McCullough. That is a mismatch when you're about 18, 25 feet away from the basket. There's it really, no way Chanel Scott yeah. stays with McCullough. It really is, but you really have to appreciate uh, Chanel Scott's mobility to even attempt to go out and hedge and trap against McCullough. St. John's has made a, clearly has made a decision. They want to trap McCullough as often as possible coming off that pick at the high post. McCullough now with 10. They want McCullough to give the ball up to the high post so that Cawley has to make the scoring pass. John, Scott, and Minlin almost lost that on the baseline. No way Scott's going to make a pass for Derek Brown with McCullough in the neighborhood. Every one of these possessions now becomes crucial as we head down the stretch here. 58-52. Derek Brown spins into the lane, misses the jumper. Big time offensive board by Chanel Scott. Absolutely. Wasn't boxed out that time. Peterson got caught underneath the basket. 19 for Chanel Scott, four-point game. McCullough wanted a clear out. He got one. Dishes inside. Peterson. Peterson with seven second-half points. Once again, McCullough the catalyst. Again, the first look is inside to Chanel Scott. 
James Scott trying to find a way. No rebound. Oh. Tipped away from Beckett, but a reach in foul is called. Beckett doing a good job on the offensive board. Yeah. Scott with a slide and glide move there, taking the baseline. Four fouls on Jerry McCullough, and that's got Paul oh. Evans nervous on the sidelines. Mike, Mike, you have that again. McCullough basically plays 40 minutes every game, so I don't know who the uh, backup point guard will be coming in here if he gets uh, if he fouls out. Some of the pit people would tell you we don't have one. Well, I think what you could have is Sharif come in and play the point. Yes. With a Galu at the shooting guard. St. John's really struggling at the free throw line here in the second half. Four of 11. One of two for Beckett. Here we go. One, two, one, one trap by St. John's. A Galu. Right through it. Whoa. Oh. oh. Dagger in the heart for, for Pitt. Whoa. Galo. Satiris. <laughs> A freshman, no, nonetheless. Oh, great no-look nice pass inside, pass. and Peterson commits the foul. Derek Brown making that pass from the top of the key. Yeah, St. John's coming right back at him. Third foul for Peterson. Look at this nifty well, here's pass. A very nifty pass. No-look pass inside to that man, Scott. That's a pretty good foul for Peterson to give up. Uh, absolutely. Don't want to give him the bucket. Very impressive numbers again for Chanel Scott. Second consecutive Big East game with 20 more points. Eric Mobley spent a long time over there on the pit bench, but his team has maintained the lead. One of two for Scott. They've got a lane violation, and Scott's going to get another free throw. Well, I think Paul has a, has a tough decision ahead of him now because uh, Eric's been sitting out so long, he just might feel that he's a little bit too cold to bring him back in unless, you know, unless he has to. Scott's got kind of a funky motion on the free throws here. People were falling into the lane all over the place on Saturday night. There's the little delay right there when he brings it up. The delay at the top of the release. Galu with the rebound. Here comes the pick again. It's a double screen for Galo. He can't get free. Pick and roll off Pauly. Willie Pauly. Good glass. Nope, not, not this, this time. time. Gant. Oh, that's a uh, big offensive board. Absolutely. Say a Gant. Gant and Midland play an awful lot alike. They're both very quiet players before they play big. Largest lead of the game for Pitt. 65, 56, 240 to go. Beckett misses a three. Gant, oh, another Gant. rebound. Oh, outstanding. Nine for Gant to go with his 10 points. And Pitt is very much in control here with two and a half to play. And McCullough's in control for certain. A Galu, boy, he's looking for that he job. He sure is. is. Not shy. Peterson back out. A Galu's going to take it this time. Rebound to James Scott. Scott up the middle on the break. And there's McCullough again. And with four fouls, he strips it. And he dunks it at the other end. Oh, and he calls a he calls a personal foul on McCullough. He I calls think they call it a technical, technical right. for hanging on the rim. Yeah. Technical for hanging on the rim. Oh, here comes McCullough inside hand. That's a terrific play by McCullough. He went in there with a the proper hand. You got to go with that inside hand and strips him clean. And then the finishing dunk. See, I don't know. When you're five ten and you dunk, I think you ought to be able to hang on for yeah. a second or two. Anyway. 207 left to go in the game. Pit and control back after these messages. It's about an hour each way. But somehow in my Taurus, I don't mind. I've never liked storms. Now I don't really notice them much. Seems like everything's getting more streamlined. Wish I could say the same for myself. For so many people, for so many reasons, Ford Taurus, the best-selling car in America. When my doctor said to start exercise, I knew I wasn't uh, 25 anymore. And that's when I called Bill, my nationwide insurance agent. Jim had some questions, so we did a nationwide care review. We talked about his financial plan, uh, life insurance, disability coverage, even retirement. And yeah, we covered everything. It turns out Jim was okay just the way he was. 
insurance-wise, right? Uh, right. The care review from Nationwide, because things change. Two minutes, seven seconds left to go here. Pitt in control, 67 to 56. Mike Gorman along with Gary Walters here at Alumni Hall as the Pitt Panthers look to extend their record to 4-0 and in the season, 2-0 and in the conference, and will sit on top of the conference standings until we start regular play in January. Jerry McCullough called for that technical foul hanging on the rim. Well, that's a critical, uh, a critical mistake on uh, Jerry's part, Mike. Because uh, he is out of the game. He's right? out of the game right yeah. now, and they can uh, little afford to not have him uh, in the last two minutes. Clearly, St. John's going to pick up the pressure now. Yeah, Derek Brown's going to shoot the technical. Six points now for Derek Brown, Jerry McCullough. Fouling out with that technical foul, he leaves with 12 points, but the, the points don't tell the story for what he did on the floor tonight. He was all over the place, Mike. However, with those two free throws and now getting the ball back, it is still just a three-possession game with 2.07 to go, and your point guard's out, which means you're going to be a little susceptible to pressure. Here. Crucial mistake. Absolutely. Going to be an awful lot of pressure put on Sharif's shoulders and also on Aguilu's shoulders. St. John's can make a three here, and this is still very much a ball game. James Scott, the crowd wanted him to take it. Derek Brown gets it inside, and Midland will go to the free throw line. Nice feed. Of course, the most important thing there is they stop the clock as well. They get a chance to go to the line, make two, and then they can get into their 1-2-1-1 one, one press off a made foul shot. Willie Cauley picked up the foul. Midland is just one of five at the line. Nervous Paul Evans. Hey, he made a move. Yeah, here they go into the trap. Interesting to see how Pitt reacts. And a steal. And the three. No rebound. Agalu gets it to Sharif. Sharif hesitates and then gets fouled as he comes across the 10 second line. Good, good outlet pass by Agalu. Derek Brown will be the guy to give the fouls here as we go down the stretch. That's just his second. 67 to 60, and it'll be up to Sharif. To make a couple of free throws here. Aguilu over talking to Paul Evans. Lyson comes back in with his three-point shot. Beckett goes out. We're almost bringing Lyson in here for a designated offense. He's a good three-point shooter as well as a good feeder of the post. Seven points for Sharif. Providence with a one-point lead on Villanova. Nine seconds to go in that game. Georgetown, a 13-point bulge on Miami. Low-scoring game. A big, big free throws by Sharif. A lot of pressure there. There's Lyson. Knocks Lyson. down a three. Put Lyson in for the three. His so second of the night. Cross-court pass. 3-0-1. Peterson. Now they're going to bring it out in the backcourt. They want to use up some clock pick. She threw a diagonal pass to Galo. He did. And Lyson yeah. with the foul. Ticky-tack foul, but he had to give it. That'll be just the first on Lyson. Not that that matters. Just late in the game. 1-13 to go. 69-63 Pittsburgh. Yeah, at this point, obviously, the, the clock's the enemy for Pitt. They got to work it as much as possible. Get the time off. Keep the ball moving ahead of the... St. John's players. First free throw he's missed in a Big East game. Still plenty of time for St. John's, Mike. Missed them both. Oh. He'll be in the gym at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> he's a real gym rat, that kid. <laughs> he is indeed. Lyson can't get it off. It'll be James Scott, long with the jumper. Nice job by Peterson, Peterson under there. Tipped away, out of bounds. It'll be pit ball with 53 seconds to go in a six-point lead. 
It's a, it's a tough place to take the ball out of bounds against the press, though, Mike. Pitt has the ball deep in the corner. Offensive and defensive substitutions made by Brian Mahoney. Beckett in to play the D. Willie Cauley's going to be the one to attempt to inbound for Pitt. You've got to watch these cross-court passes from that area. There's the trap for Galu. Beckett gets it off the glass and lays it in. Well, Sharif, you can see in the pull out of the game, the Pitt's struggling to hold on here. Cauley, the nice pass. pass. Peterson gets fouled. Just a nice bounce pass by Cauley. Good discipline on the part of Pitt. 40 seconds to go. And free throws continue to be key here, but James Scott. And Sharif doing a good job coming back here and settling a Galu down. Had to give his fifth foul, so Absolutely. Scott is gone. That's with 18 tonight. Had no choice. He's boy, Mike, he just played a great game for St. John's. Eight rebounds to go with those 18 points for James Scott. Well, clearly, Pitt's got to make the free throws if they want to hold on to win. Crazy game, isn't it? it sure is. <laughs> the momentum swings. <laughs> A nice stroke. All eight of Peterson's points in the second half. Lyson partially blocked by Colley, loose underneath. Just a great. Agalu's got the loose ball. Great athletic play by Midland. Up boy, oh, too oh. far for Willie Colley. It's not over yet. Well, Agalu making some freshman mistakes here. Should have pulled the ball back out and just worked the clock. Derek Brown. Derek Brown from deep. And Brian Mahoney oh. calls a timeout with 22 seconds to go. Derek oh, Brown. Oh boy, watch this. Comes Very down the court, just stops, pulls up, left handed jump shot from deep. Nothing but net. And the clock, of course, with the new rules, stopping in the final minute of play after every made basket. There's a final Providence, a one-point win on the road over the Villanova Wildcats, 66-65. Rick Barnes will be happy to escape there. Well, once again, the strategies will be interesting here, Mike. I think that uh, St. John's is going to stay in their 1-2-1-1 press. Pitt's got to find a way to get it over half court. And if they do, and if they get fouled, they got to find a way to make the foul shots. Pitt's got two timeouts left. St. John's doesn't have any. And one thing that uh, Pitt can do in this situation if they're being overplayed is they can run a man out of bounds and throw the ball cross court and then throw the ball inbounds once it's been passed out of bounds one time. Question, if you're a defender yes. and they're making that pass. Right, on the baseline. Yes. Can you interfere with that pass no, at all? No, you can't. That's a technical. If you touch it. And what looked like a meaningless foul on Jerry McCullough after the dunk and what he thought would seal this pit win uh, has been huge. Looms large now. All right, Gant to inbound. Gets it in. There's a uh, foul, foul given right immediately away. to Sharif by Beckett. Only a second off the clock. Clearly the St. John's strategy was to force Pitt to go to the line if they couldn't steal the inbounds play. Brian wants to put the pressure on the away team hit led by 11 with 215 to go it is now two with 21 seconds to go peterson gant holly sharif and agalu are on the floor for pit as paul evans is going to have his three cut newcomers <laughs> learn under fire here uh, this is what it's all about mike to be able to go up to the line like that and Ice water in your veins and drain it. Hamid showing terrific poise. Here's the big one right here. This just really is. a two possession game. That's exactly right. Well, he did his job. He sure did. And Cooley. 
Derek Brown. Stripped Good by hands. Sharif. Good defense. Agalu takes it in and gets oh, two. Up. Tell you, Sharif came up big on defense and on offense. Midland back out, Derek Brown, not this time, a rebound in traffic, Gant, and that's been the story of the night. And Chris Gant and Janelle Scott, who have been oh. chatting on occasion all evening. Well, it's been getting a little rough in there, but you really have to give Pitt some credit to come in here, and uh, it appears though they're gonna come out of here with a victory. And there's the final Georgetown, a 14-point win on the road at Miami, holding Miami to just 47 points. And a happy Paul Evans on the yeah. pit sidelines, and Jerry McCullough feels like he dodged a bullet. I'll tell you, and, and uh, in a situation where uh, Paul's decision to go with the three newcomers, the two JC transfers, and, and uh, Agalu has, uh, you know, come up uh, roses for Paul. Mm -hmm. I think at this point in the season, the Pitt team appears to have as much depth at every position except point guard as any team in the Big East. Gant makes one of two. And Derek Brown gets it off at the buzzer. It won't go down. And an impressive win here this evening for the Panthers of Pittsburgh. Paul Evans and Brian Mahoney congratulate each other. And uh, you got to be impressed with Pitt, as you say. Well, you really do, Mike. Uh, you know, a terrific game. They hit the boards. They ran their offense nicely. And McCullough, what, what else can you say? He was all over the place tonight. Along with Gary Walters, this is Mike Gorman saying once again, the final score here from Alumni Hall, hit 75. And the Redmen of St. John's, 67. from our sponsor. Dreams come true in my new shoe. That's not what I want to say. Rewind. Wow, it's Charles Barkley. And his new shoe. This is my new shoe. It's a good shoe. Won't make you dunk like me. Won't make you rich like me. Dang. Won't make you rebound like me. Definitely won't make you handsome like me. Good. It'll only make you have shoes like me, period. Now that's what I want to say. Next on Knicks game night, the Knicks cannot back up the harsh talk in Utah. We'll hear from James Worthy, one of the few remaining Lakers old guard. And Peter Vesey with some nuggets from Golden State and the first Maverick is set to escape the corral in Dallas. Hi, everybody, and welcome to this edition of Knicks Game Night. I'm Mike Crispino. We join you a few moments late because of the end of the St. John's game, which you just saw on the MSG Network. The Knicks tonight at the Great Western Forum in Los Angeles against the new look Lakers. No Kareem, no A.C. Green, no Magic, of course, and no Byron Scott, who has moved to the Indiana Pacers. Instead, Anthony Peeler, Nick Van Exel, and Doug Christie among others, along with holdover James Worthy, who we will hear from later in this program, who comes off the bench now at about 20 minutes a game. Without Charles Smith in the lineup now for the next 20 to 25 games, he underwent successful surgery on his knee to remove some cartilage fragments today. He'll be out for the next six weeks. The Knicks offense will have to come from somewhere. Pat Riley needs more production from everyone, especially Pat Ewing. And if he gets in foul trouble, he has to wonder where it will come from. Like last night in Utah when the Knicks... so they're going to throw the football a little bit, but throw the conservative underneath yeah. pattern. Don't gamble throwing the ball to Hill Mary downfield unless it's there. And one thing I'd really like to see Lucas do is when he breaks the pocket and scrambles to look downfield and have vision to see the receivers because you know somebody's going to be open. Here's the running play. 
play they toss in and Willis boy he gets tagged at the line of scrimmage and it's John McCray who not only stayed at home I mean he really attacked it. <laughs> there's uh, you know and there's a situation where you know Rutgers mixing it up and trying to get Pitt to, to think pass and uh, defensively they, they dialed the right number did they. Oh and seldom do you find well you when you find in the good runners they attack the defenders and that's exactly what happened boom that's a lot of load that you're sticking your head in there to stop but he, got little, he got a little stinger himself maybe singing do da do da quick pass has it complete Italian still fighting is down to the 30 yard line now that is very close to a Rutgers first down Tumulty is there on the play again. Boy is Tumulty all over the place he, he runs he's chasing Lucas scrambling he's making tackles he's falling back and he, he's supporting the run. He's, he's on his way to uh, a pretty good night. Willis look at that quick cut back and he takes it inside the 25. The coaches hollering for the offense to get up and get the ball snapped get it called and get back to the line of scrimmage. Pitt's defense wouldn't be surprised to see him come from the outside off the corner with the linebackers try to get to the pinching effect on Lucas so that if he does scramble if you don't get to him it's got to be up the middle and keep the two tackles at home. Quick pass, Bradley has it. And only because of a good open field tackle, he thought he was going to pick up extra yardage, but it was Sumner who made the one on one. And that'll move the chains again. Now we've just gone under six minutes left to play. Pitt 21, Rutgers 10. Clock will become a factor because we have seen Pitt with the ability to run the football and have some long sustaining drives. Willis right up the middle. Going to be hit and shoved back and it's Halpin who is right there. And now the timeout has been called by Rutgers. So we'll take it with him. 534 left of the ball game. It's chasing after something you may never catch. It's hit or miss. And some days it's more miss. It's disappointing. It's dangerous. It's never, ever boring. In other words, it's exactly like a cowboy's life. At Wrangler, we know cowboys. Our genes were invented by them. Wrangler, the Western original. In the Gulf of Mexico, Phillips Petroleum was one of the first companies to create artificial reefs from its oil rigs. It's something that's attracted hundreds of species of fish while helping to protect the livelihood of a rare breed of man. That's what it means to be a performance company. In the year 23,012 B.C., Lenny, the traveling salesman, rented the first big round wheel from Thrifty at a nice small rate. Today, you can still get low rates now on cars with four wheels. Simply use your Montgomery Ward credit card at Montgomery Ward Car Rental at participating Thrifty locations. Renting wheels at low prices is nothing new to Thrifty. In fact, we invented it. Thrifty Car Rental, historically known for low rates. Only five minutes and 34 seconds left in the ball game. Rutgers still has two timeouts left. Ball at the 16 yard line. It is second down. Lobs it, got him open, and he overthrew him. Oh, good heavens. Eddie Walker not only had broken free, and he was open. Oh, I'm telling you. You know, that, that's where Forte usually is a little better. He has a better pass on he that. He does a better job of putting air under the ball and letting uh, the wide receiver run under it. Well, you know, you're just going to say he's going to come up the field and give himself enough room from the outside. 
and, uh, and and he had it. He had the man beat two or three yards. Flag is down. They throw the same route. You know, I'm looking at the field thinking, am I seeing a replay? <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Wait a minute, Ron. They don't have it that big. There is a flag down at the 15. Pitt says it's against Syrac uh, against uh, the Scarlet Knights. Illegal procedure on the offense. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Well, that's a penalty that never before this season. It started, <laughs> but last year a lot, but uh, Craig, this year, every week, four, five, and six times. And it's because of all the, the shifting and changing players around and everything, but this is awfully late in the season. This is only the first one here, but last week in the Miami Syracuse game, we must have seen it almost a dozen times between the two teams. And that's inexcusable because from up here, it appeared to be the same play they just run. So yeah. how can't the guy go back to the same slot position that he was and get on the line? Fourth down. The line to make is the eight. <laughs> Lucas going to be hit and he's sacked by Tom Bart. Lucas just hasn't figured out yet how to control himself because he knows he can run with his legs. He obviously has more ability or more confidence in his ability to scramble and run. He knows the pressure's coming from the inside, but there are a lot of quarterbacks.